Welcome back to Coindesk TV. My name is Hey, welcome back to Coindesk TV. My name is Brady Dale. I'm a reporter here at Coindesk. Uh, Protocol Labs has been the origin of some of the biggest things in crypto, definitely more things in crypto than almost any other company can claim. Different pieces of different things, such as uh, Coinless, the interplanetary file system, LibP2P, and today's most relevant project, Filecoin, all in one way or another, trace their origins back to Protocol Labs. And uh, today, uh, we are here with Juan Benet, the founder and CEO of that company. Uh, welcome, Juan. How you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you too. So uh, I have been following you guys since before I was even at CoinDesk. You guys have, uh, you know, been a, a major force in the space for a while. Been keeping an eye on you, but you've been you've been super quiet for some time now. More quiet than most crypto companies out there. Why, why have we not heard too much from you guys here for a while? We haven't been too quiet. We've been mostly focused on talking to our developer communities um, on each of our projects. So we've been um, pretty active with um, uh, our groups on, on IPFS and Lip2P and Filecoin and, and so on. Uh, we just haven't been as kind of outwardly focused in, in a lot of the conferences and, and so on, um, mostly kind of developer oriented conferences. Uh, it's been a, you know, kind of heads down building time for us. Um, we have a lot of work across uh, the whole suite of products uh, and projects. So um, you know, Lip2P is getting to be a, uh, a major building block for a lot of um, a lot of protocols out there. Uh, IPFS is growing and getting adopted now by by lots of applications in Web3, and now finally crossing the chasm to to kind of the mainstream world, uh, kind of outside of of Web3. And um, and the big one, which is Falcoin. Um, you know, most of our focus is on um, is on Falcoin and getting getting the mainnet set up um, and getting it out out of the door. Um, it's been a, a, a huge journey, and we're we're really really stoked about um, uh, about shipping it. So Filecoin is a system where anyone from regular people to you know big server farms can uh, can do work and earn cryptocurrency uh, by putting storage space on the network uh, that people can use and, and theoretically get affordably. I've got to start off with kind of a tough question. It's the first thing anyone technical says to me anytime uh, Filecoin comes up, and, and that is. Why do we need a decentralized storage system? Storage is the thing in, in just not even in crypto and IT in general that just keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and more available and more available. So, wh why why Filecoin? Well, so a, a few a few reasons. So one is um, it's cheap if you're storing a little bit of data, but if you start storing petabytes of data, that those numbers get really big. Um, depending on how long you you're storing it for and how hot you want that storage, uh, it starts uh, costing. Um, you know, large, uh, large amounts of money, and, and that cost can can actually uh, get reduced. Uh, the other part is um, you have uh, a, a a market that is um, pretty centralized, where there's a few cloud providers um, that effectively uh, create a huge moat around them, where they're uh, competing against every single dis uh, storage provider, kind of one to one, right? So uh, for a small storage provider to be able to to compete against uh, the world's biggest storage provider, that's a very hard. Uh, hard thing to do. But if you think of taking all of the smaller storage providers and all of the people who right now are not um, renting out any of the storage but might have a lot of it, and you bring them together in a centralized marketplace, then you can amass a, a, a truly large amount of um, uh, of storage and and potentially get get much better um, but, but much better uh, market efficiencies than than a centralized organization could. So think of this as kind of like the Airbnb world where right where um, sure, a, a person renting out their their spare bedroom, it would be very hard for them to compete against, say, um, Hilton or, or or a hotel chain like that. But the moment that you create a, a marketplace uh, around all of that, then um, then people can plug into that. Uh, the user experience can be the same, and and then you can actually get get a get a, a scale that that um, leverages all this on on use on use uh, resource. And that, that's interesting. So, but is it, um, I guess the question I'd have about Airbnb versus Filecoin. Because I sort of what I hear you saying is kind of if if all these storage providers work together, they can kind of um, they can kind of become one massive thing that competes with AWS or or whatever. Um, yeah. But like, do individual storage providers still have latitude to set their own prices? Yes. Yeah. Totally. So so the um, okay. the way that the, mar the market it's designed as a marketplace where storage providers set their own prices and clients hire them for deals. Um, and the other thing to notice is uh, not all storage is created equal. 
So there might be a lot of features that you might want about that storage. So for example, you might care about where it is. You might really care about the specific geographic uh, location. You might have um, regulatory constraints that say that the data must be stored in a particular continent or, or not yeah. in some continent. Um, or you might need things like HIPAA compliance or things like that. So we're looking at designing a marketplace where store providers can can set up their prices, set up their reputation and their their um, their features, uh, and then clients that are interested in, in storing data with them can kind of select in that market marketplace, drill down to find the providers that they they, they want to uh, deal with, and then do all that matchmaking. Yeah, like this is kind of the the location thing. That's kind of, that was kind of one of Netflix's uh, competitive advantages, right? They figured out if we store data closer to users, they'll have a better experience, right? Yeah, exactly. And so one of the, so the market, uh, Procment has two parts of it. One is the storage market and one is the retrieval market. So the storage market, you can think of it as large data centers, uh, people with large, um, uh, large racks of drives and so on, or potentially, you know, even smaller groups, but, you know, really racks of drives. And then you can think of the, uh, and so that is kind of where data should be stored long term. Um, because you want your data to be safe uh, for many months to years, you don't uh, just kind of want your, your data to be stored in um, a, a computer that might, that might disappear. Uh, now, but the retrieval market, that's where latency, um, we, we're optimizing for latency. And so the idea there is, uh, imagine if everybody's computer, even if they have just a small, small disk, uh, can get the storage that is, uh, can get the data that is most relevant for that region. So content on the internet follows this distribution where most of the content is never accessed. It's just kind of stored long term and maybe some bits of it are randomly accessed. And the vast majority of content that gets accessed a lot is, is, you know, or a, a small amount of storage and so you can move all of that storage to the edges um and so you can get kind of like a like a cdn that forms out of this automatically where the uh people can join the retrieval market wherever they are could be isps could be cdn companies of today or it could be people in in specific um uh, you know in cities uh in buildings think of getting um you know you're trying to download um uh, like a website or or watching the latest YouTube video or something like that and yeah. being able to pull that video from the closest uh, peer near you potentially right next door. Right, right. Um, yeah, you, you said use the term CDN there. That's the contact distribution model, right? That's a, that's a sort of kind of yeah. business. It's the it guts of the internet, right? Um, yeah, so, exactly. So I just did a story about you guys. You know, it's hard to believe anyone out there might not have read it, but let's just assume there could be one or two people. Um, you guys are sort of seeding the network right now with an interesting approach and, and sort of an interesting um, pool of data pools, right? Could you sort of explain the, the offering you guys have out right now? Yeah, so um, this is a, we started a project called Falcon Discover to try and, and seed the Falcon network with, um, with a ton of extremely valuable data, data to humanity. So think of the world's most, uh, you know, think of the most important data sets, things like open access journals, um, think of Wikipedia data, um, think of, um, genomic data, think of all, all of this really important, valuable public data. Uh, and so we, we kind of started this, this, this project to help seed the beginning of the network, uh, with a lot of this data, um, to kind of provide it, uh, as kind of a testing ground. Uh, part of it is that, you know, in a, when you're building a network like this, um, you first have to kind of prove out the network and make sure that it's that um, that it can offer a certain levels of quality before the really large clients are gonna um, are gonna seriously consider consider moving onto it. Um, we kind of see a world where Web three adoption will be pretty fast. Like a lot of Web three groups will start using it right away because of of IPFS and and that'll be kind of a smooth transition. But um, but kind of people outside of of the crypto world where for them kind of using cryptocurrency is kind of a hurdle. Um, they will want to see kind of a network proved out over some period of time and then see kind of uh, kind of a quality quality uh, storage service. And that's where uh, the, this Falcon Discover project comes in. We can help seed the network with with vast large amounts of data um, that's extremely valuable for for humanity to store and and, and distribute. Um, and then just use that to to kind of um, get the get the whole flywheel of the of the network going. Yeah, right. Okay, so um, now I know you're not, you're probably not going to be able to say much about this at all, but this is a crypto show, and I've got to ask: um, How long until the Filecoin system launches, and then how long until I think you guys' token is the only one that doesn't exist on the market yet of like the big ICOs of 2017? Um, how long until that is out in the wild somewhere? Uh, so, so I think uh, I think there's a, there's a few other other networks that haven't launched yet uh, from from that period, but um, we we right now our our current best estimate it places it around July August. So we're kind of targeting that time frame. Uh, this is software estimate, of course, and so you know uh, things uh, things can change and 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 shift. 
um, we try to be as, as transparent and direct with the whole community and give the, like our own internal estimates as, um, as a prediction. Like we don't, we don't try to create a date that's like kind of super conservative, um, and then kind of, um, uh, push it off because a lot of the developers that are working with us are, are people that are external, um, to, to protocol apps, like the other organizations that are developing, uh, the protocol with us or developing applications. And so everyone kind of has to have the, that same, uh, same estimate. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're getting close. Uh, it's, it's, uh, July and August. It's going to be a really, really exciting time. And are you guys going to be able to do one of these things like our weave is doing where you can like spend a certain amount and your website will exist forever? Yeah, it's a good, good question. So we've, we've considered that. And, and, um, you know, one of the, um, first things that came out with, uh, came up, came up with Epifast was this concept of, of permanence and persistence and, and permanent addressing. Uh, we really care about backing up data for, for long term and, and, you know, ideally forever. Um, but there are some like really difficult economic problems when you, when you try to back up large amounts of data forever. Uh, you can definitely do it for small amounts of data. Um, you can definitely, uh, create an economic model to, to keep around probably, you know, a few terabytes, maybe a petabyte of data. But as soon as you start hitting, hitting really, truly large scales, um, you need an economic system that, that continues to maintain, maintain that information. So the way that we want to achieve that is with, with contracts where you can, load up a contract with money okay. um and so this is not gonna be uh, kind of live at, at the very beginning but imagine um having a contract you can actually do this in ethereum today uh yeah. probably at the beginning actually but load a contract with money and then pay over time and, and continue well, we'll, kind of creating deals indefinitely we'll keep we'll keep watching for that one uh and thanks a ton for being on here you know it sounds like uh my personal little blog will be safe forever if i wire into one of you guys so uh, looking forward to that thanks Absolutely. a ton great to hear from you Looking forward to talking to you later this week. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. And uh, so everyone, stay tuned here to Coindesk TV. Uh, what do the Winklevoss twins, NBA stars, and beauty influencers have in common? Stick around for mass adoption with Lee Quinn and Zach Seward here on Coindesk TV coming up next.